I had the chance to build another whiskey barrel guitar, so let's get to it. I start with a raw barrel, take it apart, and use the bottoms. So I've got the barrel bottoms here, and what we're going to do is we're going to saw off the char. Some guys, I've noticed, just scrape it off, but here I'm actually going to cut it off all to the same length. We're going to then glue these up downstairs. So we'll lay a bead of glue in between each slat, glue it up. These barrels have a finger joint essentially, and we'll just glue them up, keep them solid. And then I stack weights on them to keep the pressure down. And then on my Inventables CNC, I found a bullet logo that looked pretty good, imported that with their easel software, and then ran that logo in, scraped off with a pad, and then I begin dropping in some black paint. I don't like just painting it on I like having it inlaid and then painted. It definitely looks better and you can see it. Painting, if I just painted it on, it wouldn't look as good as the CNC built in. So I've got some black paint and we'll just go through and paint it. I learned to actually thin the paint the more I've gotten to do these. But this takes about maybe an hour so here I actually thin the paint a little bit with water and then get a dropper and I can drop in the smaller pieces that are hard to actually paint. And this worked out really nice actually. I also wanted to make sure that I have the logo lined up with the slats running vertical. And then we take it over to my wine press clamp and I glue down this quarter inch oak sheet. So what I do is I take two barrels and depending on how the thickness ends up, sometimes I'll put a quarter inch sheet in the middle. Other times I will just glue them straight up, depending on how much is left. And then I've got a bowl carving bit and my template. And I run this through and just get it so that I take about a half inch. So if these are three quarter pieces of woods, I leave a quarter inch. And this hollows out the guitar, essentially gives it chamber wafer leading weight relief. And that really helps lighten up the oak. There's nothing like this on the market. It's a really unique body, really unique sound. And I used to have a pin router in the garage that I was doing this on and I realized that a bowl carving bit and an extra router were cheaper than keeping that whole machine and eating up all that garage space. So then here's the back. I use barn wood back or another barrel depending on what I'm doing and who I'm making it for. The original Whiskey Barrel Guitars had a barnwood back, and so this is a piece of old growth eastern white pine that we got out of uh, a barn in Tennessee. So we glued it up, sort of piecemealed it together, reused, upcycled, whatever you want to call it. We'll cut it up on the same 10 inch Craftsman bandsaw, and then we'll feed this through my 25 inch drum sander to get it flat and get ready to glue it on. Probably the three or four most tools I use are the drum sander, my big band saw, my little band saw, and then that Craftsman router. So then we're gonna put some glue pins in here and this allows me to not have to screw it together. I have alignment pins and we'll just tap in these pins. Sorry for the iPhone filming here, vertical. But I wanted to show this to you guys. This is sort of the key to uh, replicating this very quickly. Screws will break off in the oak. It's very hard. 
So we put these pins in on each side. I have this on my master template. And then we'll cut them off so only the edge of the pin slips in. And again, we'll take that over to the wine press clamp and glue that together. So here's the back. You can see the holes drilled for the pins. Again, we're just using Type Bond 2, regular wood glue, a regular Type Bond. Apply the glue with the credit card, make sure it's all thinned out everywhere, spread out everywhere. And I get the pins, push them down so it sinks in. And that's clamped onto the wine press then. This wine press clamp has been a great find glued together hundreds of body using it so then after we let that glue dry we're going to take this back upstairs on a cold winter morning in my pajamas we're going to trim the rest of the backwood that was not perfectly cut so we trim it on the saw to rough shape and then the router brings it to the full shape so we'll go through pass that through and then I've got a quarter inch bit and I'm going to put a round over on the body so make it nice and comfortable. And then I'll hand sand a little bit of it to get it cleaned up so wherever there were some router lines I'll go ahead and do that. Probably take about 10-15 minutes make sure that there's no scratches and then this is my trick instead of using the vinegar solution, I actually char the sides and it gets that perfect look just like a charred barrel. So I've got a propane tank and a flamethrower on the top of it and we'll go through and char all the sides and then even put like a like a burst-ish effect on the sides. And then once we do that, we'll come back and sand some of that char off so it doesn't actually wipe off on you when you're playing it. And we'll get it just cleaned and you'll get a little bit of the char on the inside of the open pores. And we'll finish routing. I've got my DeWalt 621 router here. I've got, I think, six or seven of these now with different bits. I've been accumulating them on eBay. I've got my routing pattern here. I've made a couple of these. This is the standard template for me. And we'll go through and just route off with two different routers. One is a rough router with a bushing and I'll sort of rough it out and then I'll come back with a top bearing bit and follow the pattern. That way I'm not wearing out the top bearing bit router too quickly and that I get like a hogger bit essentially and I'm routing out uh, most of the material with two different bits. Found that this keeps my top bearing bits uh, running smooth and for some reason those bits are still relatively expensive. So we'll swap off to the other router. This is got a three quarter quarter inch diameter half inch cut and this will just do all the cleanup and get this exactly to the pattern the neck depth is the most critical do that just a little bit less than five eighths we'll trim off the top and then we'll do one final route to get it all cleaned up and the proper depth I've got a long electrician's drill bit and that'll be for all the wiring and then I get a burr, a drill burr and then I just route out a little bit around where the holes are, gives me a little bit more wiggle room with the wiring and then we're going to char where the neck goes just to match the rest of the body. It's those finer details in life. 
So I have these necks batch made and I'm showing you my finish technique on them. And it's a three step process now. These are white oak necks, vintage specs. And I've got a aging agent in that bottle. It's like a weathering agent. Uh, I can't remember exactly who sells it, but it just makes the wood look old. So it's very similar to the tannin solution that I had made in one of my previous videos. I found it was easier just to buy it because I actually go through a lot of this stuff for the next. So I spray it on, wipe it down. It is water-based and no, I'm not worried about it playing with the neck or the frets at all. And then now I have a bunch of barrels and a bunch of extra char. And what I do is I take that char and I work it into the neck. And what this does is actually helps close the pores and it just makes the neck feel a little bit smoother. So this is my secret technique here I'm sharing with you guys. But now the oak looks, the, the white oak looks exactly charred as the um, barrels. So then I've got a special finishing solution that dries these necks relatively hard for a wipe on. This is a varnish that I'll apply two coats on, let it really soak into the wood and then wipe it off. My can was breaking, so I poured it in the two little cans. Just a standard, uh, like a urethane wipe on. I'll let this dry, I'll put two coats on. I let these necks sit then for about two weeks to really allow that varnish to dry up. And then I've got some 600 grit sandpaper and a wipe on poly. And then I just sort of sand, wet sand to fill all the grain and to get that neck then really smooth. So this is sort of a, a special process where I age the necks, I pour fill with the char and I seal the necks with the urethane. And then I come back here with a, a wipe on poly and just sort of sand it up and it gives the necks just a really nice feel. I've yet to find a neck that has the same feel and it doesn't have a real heavy lacquer or you know spray on poly. It's a nice sealed but breathable neck. When you play these things, there's nothing that really sounds like them. So we'll join the neck to the body Drill a couple holes at a starter point. Swap out the bit. And drill these out. Widen them a little bit at the end. Drilling in the oak with these screws has been painful. At times, stuff has gotten stuck. So, oak is definitely hard. Going to use a reamer for the tuners. Clean off where I am... Uh, where I wiped all that stuff on and then I've got a template for my ratio tuners all my guitars come with the ratio tuners Graftech has been an awesome company and has supported me so I will only use those tuners if you want to get some supplies as a builder I can give you Gary's email he'll help you out much better pricing so then wiring this up is always a lot of fun. It's like two hours of work and it's hard to just sort of do the filming of this part. But the wiring is, is relatively simple for a telly here. The final setup probably takes about two hours, probably about 20 minutes for the wiring. I've got a new 40 watt soldering iron from Weller. I was always using the 25 watts and I finally upgraded to a little bit stronger of a gun. And I've got my custom pickups, custom bridge. The neck is like a little bit warmer, hotter PAF. And then the bridge is a hot telly bridge pickup. 42 gauge plain enamel wire and Anlico 2 magnets. 
And then I've got Faro Guitars making my bridges. He is a aircraft machinist in New Jersey who makes guitar bridges. And these are the best I have found. Really happy with the service and the quality of these parts. So I use a laser level to lay out the guitar. And then I do all the drilling and screw it all together. So the laser level gets everything nice and clean. Here's some sound clips with my Vox AC30. Thank you. 